Okay, today we're going to dive a bit deeper into recursion by looking at a very common problem, determining the nth character of the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence is just a mathematical sequence that starts with uh, two ones, and from there it just goes on infinitely where you sum the previous two numbers to get the current number. So 1 plus 1 equals 2, and 2 plus 1 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8, and so on. So this is a, it's a perfect problem for recursion, but it can be really hard to wrap your head around because it takes one step beyond um, like the, the most basic form of recursion that you, you first start to learn. So it's a really good problem for kind of like really getting a grasp of, of what recursion is. But first I have, oops, first I have this non, I just have this out here for uh, time purposes. So first we have, plus I'd probably, you know, make a bunch of mistakes going in and you'd have to watch that. So you just have it set here, uh, this non-recursive version that I'll walk you through to kind of get a sense that recursion is not magic. It's just a lot of things are hidden from you because you're using the call stack and things like that to um, to sort of do some of these things that you would otherwise have to do manually or imperatively. So here we go. Function is called fib and it takes a number n and we're going to return the nth number in the Fibonacci sequence. So we start with these first two numbers which essentially correspond to this. We call them previous and current. Um, and I'll keep little running tallies here just so we know what everything is at any given state in our program. Let's start with a fib of 5, so n will equal 5, just because that it gives us enough to sort of see when we go to the recursive version to see how it kind of works. Um, so, okay, let's have i, we start at 2, and next is going to be 1 plus 1, previous plus current. So basically this is just going to be kind of a, a shifting uh, two-pointer pattern where we kind of slinky our way up through the Fibonacci sequence. So we start with our two initial numbers and we ask the, or we ask the question first, does, is n less than 3? If not, return 1 uh, because we know if it's you know the first or the second character, we know that the answer is going to be 1. Um, otherwise, let's store these first two characters and then start working our way up. So let's start i uh, at 2 and then compare it to n. Um, i is 2, so 2 is less than 5. Next is going to be 1 plus 1 or 2. And then previous is going to equal our current. This is our just shifting pointer pattern. So now previous is going to equal current is one and you know there's not going to be a big change here current um, is going to equal next which is now two so we go back up we increment our i we do it again um, while next equals uh, previous plus current oops I should have updated this here because uh, current equals two so now we have one plus two equals three now next is three then we're going to shift again um, current becomes next which is 3 we have to update here then we go back up here and we increment our i okay so we're moving through the loop now i equals 4 next equals previous plus current which is 1 oops didn't update that which is 2 plus 3 which equals 5 all right, then we're gonna just shift up again where previous equals current, and now current equals next, which is five. And then we're gonna increment our i, and then we're gonna say, is five less than five? The answer is no, so we're gonna return current, which we can see here. Sorry, I didn't update here. Um, that would be five, that would be three. 
we're going to return current, which is 5. And that gives us our answer, which is the fifth term in a Fibonacci sequence, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, it's just a coincidence that this number is 5. If we wanted the sixth term, you know, the answer would be 8. So that is much less elegant than the recursive solution, but it kind of gives you a no magic look at how you count your way up the, um, the Fibonacci sequence. I'm going to take this and bring it up, up a little higher. And we're going to talk about what happens when we run our recursive solution. So a moment to digest. We have a function, fib takes uh, n, number n, and returns the nth number in the Fibonacci sequence. Same exact thing. So for this, we would also expect to get 5. Um, 3 is easier to do it with. 1, 2, 3, oops, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, fourth term here is easy to, easier to do it with, but there's a reason I'm choosing 5, and it'll become clear when we look at the call stack and what, what happens. Um, so we're basically just returning our recursive function twice to get the uh, two previous terms in the Fibonacci sequence. It's going to make a lot more sense once we start running it. So let's just start there. Um, I'm going to add a breakpoint to this line and then I'm going to launch this. And now we see, okay, we have the function fib on the call stack and n is 5. So I'm just going to write that here and kind of mirror what we're seeing here. So fib is 5. Okay, let's go ahead and step over to the next call. Okay, we pushed another function fib onto the call stack, this time with an n of 4. So we got fib 4 here. All right, go ahead and call again. You can probably guess what's going to happen. Um, well, you can see we jumped up because now we have an n of 3 and we have another fib on the call stack. Fib of 3. So something's going to happen. Obviously something changed. Just jumped up here. So let's just go one more time. Step over and see that, okay, we have a return value now. Uh, that return value is 2. So let's look at what fib 3 is doing. So first we return uh, fib3 is going to return fib2 oops fib2 plus fib1 so we have n minus 1 is 2 and n minus uh, 3 minus 2 is 1 so let's look at what those return well fib2 two, 2 is less than 3 so fib2 is going to return 1 and 1 is less than 3 so fib1 is also going to return 1 if 1 plus 1 equals 2. And that's how we get this return value of 2, where n equals 3. So let's continue there. And we now lost that off the stack. We only have this, these two remaining. We popped it off the stack, and now n is 4. So we can just say, OK, that got popped off the stack. Let's look at what fib4 is. Well, it's just going to be the same thing. Fib3 plus fib2. And then we just return the value of fib3. So we know the value of fib3. And we can say the value of fib2, because n is less than 3, we know it's going to be 1. So we can calculate this one already. And we say that the answer of fib4 uh, the fourth term in the Fibonacci sequence is going to be 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. We just talked about that. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. We have two functions on the call stack. We run through. We get our return value of 3 like we talked about here. Um, let's see. Okay. Now we're down to Fib 5 n is 5. We're on the last one. We pop this one off the call stack. 
So this is where it gets a little interesting, and this is where recursion um, becomes a little more uh, interesting. You understand that there's there's more going on behind the hood uh, than than it seems, and these recursive trees, which is essentially what they are, can get really big. Um, I won't go too much into that now because it's beyond the scope of this specific talk. But let's just continue with this and see what. I'm talking about. Okay, so shouldn't be a surprise here. Fib four, we get from five minus one, fib four, and then five minus two, fib three. Okay, well, we just return the value of fib four, and it's three. So that equals three plus fib three. Now, fib three, three is not less than three, so we can't just return one right away. Um, and we didn't just return the value of fib 3. There's nothing, we're not remembering the value of fib 3. So we actually don't have an answer right now to, to this question. We still have fib 3 there. So let's go ahead and run. And aha, another fib function pushed to the call stack with the value of 3. So that's kind of what we would expect because we forgot uh, we forgot what this value was and there are techniques to remember but again that's beyond the scope. Um, so since we forgot what that value was we have to push it back onto the stack. We have to recalculate it. So there's some redundancy here. Uh, but that's okay because for right now, you know, we don't we're not super concerned with performance. So we push fib3 onto the stack. And this is essentially a branch in the tree. So let's just, uh, let's see, oops, sorry, I'm some latency with my mouse here. Okay, so let's pay, take fib3 and put it up on the stack where it properly is. Um, so fib2 plus fib1, we have to recalculate that value, and we know fib2 equals 1 because uh, if we look down here, 2 is less than 3, so we're going to return 1, and then we have plus 1, same principle, equals 2. So let's see what happens. Aha! Yes, there's our return value of 2 for n equals 3. And so we can, well, let me just run it. We have 2 here, you're going to see that one pop off the stack. So we pop that fib off here and return its value to its proper place here. And then finally, I think we have enough to finally come back to our original question, what is the fifth term in the Fibonacci sequence? Well, it's the sum of the fourth term and the third term, and we just meticulously calculated what those were, and we came up with the answer five, which we would expect one, two, three, four, five. The fifth term is indeed five. Let's go ahead and run that. And uh, all the way down, let's just play through. And there we go. Our answer, console.log of five.